Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time tuning in. We trust that you are blessed with what you hear today. We extend a warm welcome to you. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for our president and our nation. Perhaps you have a special request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our president and our nation at this time. Father, we pray for our local community that you will continue to open up doors of contact and utterance. And Father, we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. You'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your virtue, your strength, your healing, your provision. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. I want to direct our attentions to a notable passage of scripture that's found in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Now, this particular passage that we are um, getting ready to read from has historically and theologically been classified as what would be known as a eschatological passage of scripture, most notably because it introduces the man of sin that we know to be the Antichrist. It's bringing all of these elements together. Second Thessalonians chapter two and three are some of the most dramatic and graphic eschatological scriptures and are definitely addressed to the church. Let's pick it up in verse number three of Second Thessalonians chapter number two. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I believe that that is a direct reference in part to what the Bible calls the abomination of desolation where the Antichrist goes into the temple and declares himself to be God. But more specifically for this devotional this morning, I wanna talk about verse number three, where it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And I wanna to talk to us simply falling away, falling away. Of course, when you take these two words and you begin to grammatically look at them individually, falling, of course, is a verb and away is an adverb. And we need to ask ourselves, falling away from what? The Bible seems to indicate in this historic passage of scripture that it's, it's talking about the second coming of the Lord. And it is somewhat of a warning that let no man deceive you, talking about that there would be people, and there are today, that are saying this is when this is going to happen, and that is when the rapture is going to happen, and this is when the Antichrist is going to appear. No man knows the day or the hour. And so don't be deceived with those kinds of things when it talks about a timeline or a chronology of end time events, because God has set things in his own time frame, in his own purpose. But more specifically, what we want to talk about is that the Bible is telling us that there is going to be a great falling away right at the threshold of the emergence and the revealing of the man of sin, the son of perdition, we know to be as the Antichrist. We know that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, according to 1 John and other places. However, what I specifically want to talk about is falling away. Falling, of course, is a verb. It's talking about action. And then away, of course, is an adverb that is talking about a degree of, of distance. What are they falling away from? I believe that if you were to read the entirety 
of 2 Thessalonians chapter number two and three, you would see that truth is the magnetic north of these two chapters of scripture when talking about um, moving away from or moving towards. In fact, listen to what it says here um, as it continues in chapter number two, talking about the Antichrist. It says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. I believe at the nucleus of this is the truth. It's loving the truth that we might be saved and then believing the truth. And so this falling away, I believe primarily is a falling away from the truth. You know, um, in the last five to six months under the shadow of this horrible pandemic. I have often pondered when thinking about um, the church that I pastor here, Cornerstone, about that there's many, there's many members of this church that I have done my very best to stay in contact with, maybe not just in a phone call every single day, but, but just by the producing and the production of these devotionals as a way of letting you know that your pastor is still at the helm, your pastor is still here at the church, we're still moving forward, the plan of God still is being unfolded to us as a congregation, and you can trust in that. We're not going anywhere. We're not gonna leave you high and dry. But I've also noted that there are some people that have begun to waver as what this pandemic has done has offered people a disconnect. You know, if you want to backslide, you now have a reason to do so. You now have a reason, a legitimate reason, not to be a part of the church, not to congregate together with all the safety measures that, we're, that we are employing for your safety and so that we can continue to worship together as a body. Everybody has their own reasons. And if they are valid and they are legitimate, we're 100% behind you. But I've also noted over the last five to six months, I've noted that there are some people that are falling away. Maybe not just from the truth, but falling away from the church. Instead of, instead of us understanding that this pandemic certainly falls into a biblical classification as being the signs of the times. Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter number 21, Mark chapter number 13, all talk about these types of things that are taking place in the world today. You would think that people that are believers and people that are, that are understanding and preparing themselves for the rapture or to see Jesus or for eternity, that there would be a drawing to. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter number two, it talks about a moving away, a falling away. I understand all of the comp all of the complications and all of the, the things that are offered to us in life. So many choices, pastor, I'm sorry, I can't be there. I'm getting an education. Pastor, I'm sorry, I can't be there. We're buying a new piece of property. We're, we're looking at this, we're looking at that. I'm involved with this. I have this other thing going on. I have this situation going on. If we're not careful, these seemingly innocent pursuits can become the threshold of what the Bible calls falling away. I submit to you that with these things that are emerging on the horizon, that we should be cleaving to the body of Christ and moving forward. We should be advancing. Currently, our congregation right now is in a 24-hour prayer chain for the next 60 days. We just may, we just may make this 24-hour prayer chain just a way of life for this church. I think the times demand it. I think the things that we are seeing, we shouldn't become more socially aware, more politically affluent, more influential in our community. I think it's time to preach the gospel as never before. I think it's time to bring our families to the forefront, recognizing that there are things that are happening that instead of falling backwards, falling away, 
doing things we know that are not right. Maybe, maybe exploring this, experimenting with this, maybe, maybe a, a small shift in our convictions. Let me lift my voice and let us know that we are closer than we have ever been. And the reason why you believe the truth and the reason why you obeyed the gospel, placing you in the church of the living God is because you believed these things. Let no man deceive you. This is no time to fall, to back away, to remove yourself because now you have medical or uh, health reasons. And if it's valid, I'm 100% with you. It's the way it should be. However, I've noticed that there are some people that are staying away when we really should be in the forefront of what God is doing. It's time to call your family. It's time to reach out to your family. It's time to reach out to your neighborhood. It's time to evangelize as we have never done before. As Noah was constructing the ark, I don't see any deviation in his plan and his program of obedience in the construction of the ark. I do not see him becoming politically involved, whether it's Planned Parenthood or some other liberal agenda that is seemingly attacking everything that's righteous and everything that the church stands for. But I see Noah in my mind's eye, I see Noah preaching until the day that they entered the ark that judgment was coming. Instead of falling away, I think it's time to step up. I think it's time to sit up, get up, stand up so that we're ready to go up. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.